Hi friends, we are going to see January month Yojana, the title Millets. So in this there are four articles which we are going to see. One is Millet Cultivation in Northeastern India, India's Wealth, Millet for Health, Health Benefits for Lifestyle Diseases, Millets for Pregnant and Lactating Mothers. So in this if you go for the first one, Millet Cultivation in Northeastern India. And before going to this article, uh, why this article is important is when we take this northeastern states, in the entire Indian uh, democracy and especially in the entire development process of India, northeastern state is comparatively not well developed, mo both in socio-economic perspective. Right now, government is providing all opportunities for its development, and they are using multifold development programs. For example. Government is trying to promote tourism there. Government is also promoting infrastructures there. Government is also focusing on connectivity. In one that aspect is government is also giving greater focus on agriculture. So in this article, they say how is the potential of millet cultivation in northeastern states? Existing potential, what are the existing dimensions, and how it can be encouraged to the next level? So before starting this uh, uh, article, we need to know that 2023 is being recognized as International Year of Millets by UN. So, with that background, we can see the importance of this particular Yojana. Okay. So, paragraph 1, paragraph 2, and paragraph 3. <coughs> so, in paragraph 1, they say about the conditions for millet, millet cultivation, conditions they have given. So, starting with especially in northeastern states so they say that uh, millets grow in tropical and subtropical regions so simply to say that millet grows in india because india is uh, in tropics subtropical region and altitude altitude of 2100 meters this height altitude and temperature so minimum temperature required is so minimum temperature required is <coughs> sorry 8 to 10 degrees celsius so this is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 also speaks about millet cultivation only it says that uh, so ideal temperature range so ideal temperature range this is the minimum requirement so when millets will be very effectively growing is when the temperature is around 26 to 29 degrees Celsius and where we have very good yield and rainfall so rainfall in the range of 500 to 900 millimeters so these are some of the geographical conditions for growing millets and which matches with the northeastern states also and what are the other importance of millets in paragraph 2 also you can see the importance of millets especially from nutritional point of view given there that is so millets is rich in calcium iron protein fiber which are essential for human development both physical and psychological aspects this has a huge role play in our human body so we can see that uh, millets has all the essential nutrition required and also they have this unsaturated fat this is all given there. These are all the points you can use it in your main sensor writing. Unsaturated fat. And uh, this is also very uh, you, uh, useful for diabetes, correct? To maintain low uh, sugar level. To maintain low sugar. One of the biggest problem right now regarding India. India is called as diabetes capital of the entire world. And we can see that... Uh, uh, diabetes is one of the major problem in India and millet can be one such solution and uh, it also helps in maintaining bone health it's all points we can relate with our answer writing improving bone health so decreasing blood cholesterol blood cholesterol this is mo most of the problem for especially people in urban India and also weight control 
So millet is a solution for most of our health issues. That is the point we can understand from this. So we uh, are in paragraph 3. It's paragraph 3. This speaks about agricultural aspects of India. That is India's agriculture based on time period. Agricultural strategy and policies and all. So in 1960s where we can see that India focused on green revolution. So India focused on green revolution and what are the outcome of green revolution is India used high yielding varieties. So primarily focused on wheat and rice, primarily focused on wheat and rice and agriculture techniques. So this clearly shows a historical evolution of uh, agriculture especially after independence especially from government policy perspective. So paragraph 1, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. Next page paragraph 1. So when we say uh, agricultural green revolution, high yielding varieties. So this was primarily focused on chemical fertilizers to get high yielding based on green revolution people began to use fertilizers and pesticides pesticides fertilizers and uh, that results in large scale production results in large scale production that is food production food production so uh, what are the aspect is even though we are able to achieve food security food security we achieve. So, there is a cost involved in it. So, the cost is uh, first one is negative effects on environment, negative effects on environment or what we call as environmental cost or ecological cost. What are the environmental cost here is one is poisoned that is given here poisoned water bodies and agricultural land. How this happens is because we are using chemical fertilizers throughout the seasons and continuously for years it has residue there. So, this residues are washed during rainfall and reaches the water bodies. So, that has an impact on water bodies and once get settled on land that has an impact on agricultural land. So, that is the point they are saying here and, uh, and low nutrition for soil low nutrition for soil because uh, under this green revolution most of the time it is always uh, monocropping and continuously every season uh, there will be always one crop for example rice means rice cultivation throughout the year wheat means wheat cultivation throughout the year so ultimately nutrients are being taken out from the soil without time for replenishment so these are some of the cost because of green revolution that is given in paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 also this speaks about the impact of green revolution and they say that uh, Madhya Pradesh is a case study here. Madhya Pradesh is called as weed bowl of India. So, weed bowl and uh, which has a great impact on. So, they say also say that how <coughs> uh, recently agriculture is transforming. So, a heat wave has an impact on agricultural productivity. So, weed production has gone down, production has gone down. This you can also relate to climate change also. And apart from this, uh, so in northeastern states, so we have this monsoon failure. So may monsoon failure that is given in northeastern states, and uh, and they also given Kaveri River Kaveri. These are some case studies where water deficit, water deficit is a major problem, and uh, so seventy percentage of crop failure, crop failure in Tamil Nadu. So, this are all clearly says the current status of Indian agriculture and this clearly correlates with millets, how millets is going to solve all these issues. Okay. So, that is in paragraph 2, paragraph 3. So, paragraph 3, so they say that uh, because of this, uh, because of this following conditions, farmers need to focus on farmers need to focus on adopt farming techniques they need to fo adopt farming techniques to s resolve all these issues in agriculture farming techniques 
and uh, which has a least negative environmental impact negative environmental impact and also to support support food demand food demand and also resulting in bettering better livelihood opportunities better livelihood opportunities and this was primarily possible only through organic farming coupled with millet cultivation so that was the paragraph says for all the problems were discussed in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 the best choice is always organic farming coupled with millet form millet cultivation so that's going in paragraph 3 so paragraph 4 so paragraph 5 and 6 in paragraph 4 and a millet cultivation the millet cultivation so sustained sustained productivity techniques or what they call it as sustainable farming techniques sustainable farming techniques what are being used is given as uh, six para six points one is using organic materials <coughs> mostly in northern synthesis happens one is organic organic supplements or organic materials organic supplements used in cultivation example it can be compost the next one is next one is it says about uh, to recycle soil nutrients and uh, that is using cover crops using cover crops this we can see multi cropping ideas and also in a particular land there are uh, simultaneously different types of crops are being used and it also uh, helps in fixing nitrogen fixing nitrogen and uh, planting green manure legum uh, legumes planting green manure legumes mostly where we can see this when we go for this uh, plantation cropping in between we can see a lot of uh, leguminous plants are being put so that it has a multi multiple effect on agriculture and intercropping what we discussed intercropping intercropping and rotation of crops so rotation of crops and management of crop residues so these are some of the ways of uh, having sustainable farming techniques which can be used for any answers of sustainable farming and also this is the practice right now mostly in northeastern states they are doing, doing it and we can show that we can see one of the biggest potential of northeastern states in agriculture is organic farming so we already have this techniques there that is given there and also in paragraph y this speaks about the concept of uh, shifting cultivation shifting cultivation in northeastern states or popularly they call it as slash and burn the terms itself says and in northeastern states mostly in hilly terrains especially by tribes they take out one particular area they cut all the trees and uh, they burn it so that residues acts as a fertilizer and they do cultivations after the nutrients are over they go for a new spot and in arunachal pradesh in arunachal pradesh so this is called as sweden sweden in arunachal pradesh called as sweden similarly in assam it's called as juhum juhum assam so these are different names use it for your answer writing and uh, this primarily tribes are focusing on all this using for millet cultivation that's the point it's given here and uh, and most of the majority crops is majority crops is always millet and they have given some examples of millet like finger millet finger millet small millet small millet foxtail millet so these are some examples of millet so which is being cultivated through shifting cultivations that is given in this para page next paragraph 1 so cultural importance of millet millet and its 
cultural importance. So millet is not only seen as a, a crop and also a food for a people. It also has some cultural importance. So they have given some examples like zan. It's a approach recipe among this moon part tribes. So they belong to Arunachal. So they belong to Arunachal Pradesh. Porridge that's uh, nothing but uh, they convert this uh, millets into porridge. Uh, which is like a watery uh, uh, breakfast and this tribes especially consumes that and uh, they eat with along with vegetables, meat, meat and cheese they consume this uh, porridge. So that is one important aspect this name Zan is used by this particular type in Arunachal Pradesh. And apart from this Apang so there are two aspects of it one is normal apang another is mauda apang there are two apangs and uh, both in our natural pratesh and one is based on rice and other is based on millet other is based on millet and uh, and this is made out of Maurang millet, it's a tribal name for it, and it's considered to be dark red organic wine. So, from the millet, they make this particular uh, drink, organic uh, 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 millet, and this was primarily done by tribes like. Adi and Nishi tribes, probably my pronunciation may be wrong. So, these are the two tribes uh, in Andaman and Nicobar, they use this uh, particular wine and uh, this part of their uh, cultural importance, especially this Adi tribes, Adi tribes have this annual Solung festival. S-O-L-U-N-G, Solung Festival in the month of September, in the month of September and uh, this is daily, uh, this particular uh, wine is being given during that festival. So these are some of the cultural importance of uh, millets in northeastern states. This can also be a potential prelims question, these two aspects, they can give us a statement in uh, uh, prelims, uh, when they want to give uh, three to four statements about millets, this can be one, they can give even specific information can be asked what type of uh, 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 may, uh, food items are made out of millets by which tribes and what occasion they use it. So this is there. Next article is India's wealth millet for health. So in that we will go for paragraph 1, paragraph 2. So in paragraph 1 it speaks about this uh, year 2023 where our Prime Minister made a huge effort in making UN declare this year as International Year of Millets. International Year of Millets. International Year of Millets. And in paragraph 2, and uh, so what are the importance of millets? It's given here. And uh, it's, it's millets are grown global. Okay. Millets or cultivated across the globe across the globe and uh, it also given some uh, major importance of it and especially from Indian perspective that is 170 lakh tons of millets are being cultivated per year in India and the entire world we are the largest one and 20 percentage of global production See, regarding billnet, India produced 20 percentage of it global production, 80 percentage of Asia's production. This we can clearly understand why government is promoting billnet because uh, when millet is consumed across the world, there is a huge potential for India to export. So, India is very keen on it. So, 20 percentage of global production, 80 percentage of Asia's production, this facts clearly indicates that. And uh, 
India's average yield is around so one uh, one twenty uh, thousand two hundred thirty nine kgs per hectare. That is average yield in India, whereas global average yield is also given. So go, go global average yield is around one two two nine kg per hectare. This clearly shows that India is very good in uh, uh, millet cultivation. This are some of the facts to support that. Okay. And we go for paragraph 1, paragraph 2. So, in paragraph 1, so when you say millets, so what are the basic idea of what are millets? It is given here. So, popularly called as millets are popularly called as mota anch in Hindi. This you can use it for your introduction about millets, and uh, these are all small seeded annual grass small seeded annual grass and primarily they focus on dry areas of dry areas of cultivation so dry areas of cultivation especially in subtropics and tropics subtropics and tropics so this can be introduction for your uh, any question on millet so, paragraph 2, so they list out what are the types of millets or categories of millets, categories of millets which can be classified into three major one, one is major millets, you can write some examples like uh, pearl millet, finger millet, this you can uh, draw as a tabular column for your answers and myla millets, we have minor millets like fox tail, fox tail millet or little millet and we have this pseudo millet, pseudo millet like uh, buckwheat. So, this you can convert as a tabular column for your answers ok. And what are the importance of millet that is being said first one is uh, importance importance first one is climate friendly so millets are climate friendly crop so climate friendly climate friendly crop so what is climate friendly crop means it's very resilient to climates so it can take the vagaries of climate and uh, so a wide range of temperature moistures and uh, that helps in uh, 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 usage of millet cultivation in different parts of agriculture sectors or agricultural uh, zones. So, that is the point that is climate friendly crop that is the first importance of uh, millet. The next one is other important second one is so viable options for small farmers. So, what is why it is a viable option for small farmers means this requires low investments. So, millet cultivation requires low investments. So, there is a need to put lot of money into it and especially this can be helpful for small and marginal farmers. In small land area also they can go for it and uh, inputs for this millet cultivation is comparatively very less. The next benefit is high in nutrition, high in nutrition and it has a health benefits. So, we have an article on this, we will see that and basically we already saw that millet is rich in calcium, protein and unsaturated fats. This has a huge uh, health benefits for uh, humans that is given there and uh, especially millets can be a solution for malnourishment. So, malnutrition can be solved through millets, solved through millets. And this is one of the biggest problem for uh, India, especially public health issue in India when compared to children's, especially for children's. So, that can be one. The next thing is economic and food security. So, economic and food security and millet is called as poor man's food grain, which clearly indicates that millets are consumed by people especially at the lowest bracket, bracket of the society where income levels are very low and this ensures this economic security and food security for the people. So, and next page we go for it. 
paragraph 1, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1 as we saw all the benefits of the millet, right now millet is part of this Poshan Abhiyan, Poshan 2.0. So, right now Indian government is primarily focused on this portion beyond our nutrition uh, for uh, children's objective is to tackle tackle malnourishment or malnutrition and uh, and they are and in this portion 2.0 important is this 2.0 so government says that we also want to use this traditional knowledge system so traditional knowledge system. What traditional knowledge system is, especially in villages and all, we have a lot of uh, food recipes which we lost in our 60 years of evolution, especially after 1981 due to globalization, where we can see that food patterns are changed. And under this portion beyond 2.0 or portion 2.0, government is trying to revive this traditional knowledge system, especially to tackle malnourishment. And that comes the role of millets because traditionally millets is on, on a part of our food patterns and this has a huge role to solve the problem of malnourishment. And uh, in this especially this uh, portion 2.0, so we have this national nutrition month, national nutrition month which is being celebrated across India, across India the, especially in the month of September, September. September and uh, which is done by Ministry of Women and Child Development, Ministry of Women and Child Development and uh, they are primarily focused on under this na National Nutrition Month, state governments are encouraged to develop millet based recipes. So, millet, uh, millet, millet based uh, recipes and which is being provided to the kids, millet based recipes and uh, and this is being provided through Anganwadis, through Anganwadi services. So, which clearly shows that government is very keen to tap the potential of millets to solve the public health issue of malnutrition. Mm, and also millets is being provided at least once a week through Anganwadi services. Whereas in paragraph 2, so right now in India, there are startups being focused on, startups being focused on millets. And fact says that uh, fact says that right now we have around 500 startups, 500 startups, especially being uh, promoted by through 500 startups promoted through this program. That is RKVY and Raftar, sir Raftar, and uh, around six crores being distributed. Okay, rupees six crores is being distributed for millet based startups in India as per this particular uh, scheme and uh, and uh, 22 starts have been approved for further funding. So, these are some data is given that is totally 66 startups are given with this value this value and also we have this uh, food safety and standards authority of India and they are coming out with every month that is recipe reviewer. So, recipe reviewer that is uh, uh, spreading awareness awareness about millets and its benefit through a recipe and they are effectively using this social media platforms for it, use of modern technology to reach the people, social media platforms, social media platforms and uh, all already we have this thousand walkathons and eat right meals programs are being organized that is given in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 and government is establishing center of excellence center of excellence on millets across India across India this clearly shows the commitment of the government to promote millet okay. next article is health benefits for lifestyle diseases and this is entirely based on millets. So, we have paragraph 1, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So, in paragraph 1, so millets are considered as wonder foods because they have given the importance of millets. So, millet consists of fiber content, will consist of fiber content, vitamins, 
vitamins minerals phytochemicals antioxidants antioxidants and this helps to solve lot of lifestyle diseases we'll see that lifestyle diseases lifestyle diseases and uh, millets in paragraph 2 millets let millet helps to reduce uh, aging so cardiovascular risk diabetes diabetes aging and cancer so they identified all these things and paragraph 3 so what are the other benefits of millets apart from health benefits uh, so water scarcity so so whenever we have a issue of water scar scarcity millets can be the best crop for it desertification can be stopped so desertification desertification and global warming so global warming and carbon footprints carbon footprints so this role can be uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, solved and paragraph 1 paragraph 2 paragraph 3 so paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 so in paragraph 1 so it says about uh, under modernization under modernization we have changed our food patterns food patterns and especially consumption has changed a lot consumption has changed a lot and uh, it is found out that 71 percentage of fatalities or deaths are due to non communicable diseases are due to non communicable diseases non communicable diseases and uh, especially like uh, diabetes and all comes under this and uh, in the also the same paragraph it speaks about this uh, reactive oxygen reactive oxygen species reactive oxygen species the imbalance of this in the cell imbalance in the cell imbalance in the cell and tissues that results in oxidative stress oxidative stress so these are some of uh, the terms used in medical world and this oxidative stress results in diseases like arthritis respiratory so respiratory diseases respiratory diseases and even it can results in AIDS all these things are given here when other conditions are matching okay so in paragraph uh, 2 that is given there and paragraph 3 so antioxidants antioxidants in millets is able to solve all this uh, issues and uh, prevent all this issues regarding this react to oxygen spe uh, species imbalance in the cell and uh, this able to resolve all these problems so that is given in paragraph 3 because of antioxidants in millets so actually, actually antioxidants in millets is able to solve all the non communicable diseases majority of them that is given there and in paragraph 4 speaks about this LDL and HDL so LDL means do low density lipoprotein low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein so low density and high density lipoprotein and what the fact says is whenever there is an increase of low density lipoprotein 
chance of heart diseases are very high whereas high density lipoprotein increases chance of heart disease goes down so to give a fact that is this is directly pro proportional to heart disease what is directly proportional means whenever this increases low density lipoprotein increases heart disease increases or as high density lipoprotein they, they call it as inversely proportion what is inversely proportion means whenever high density lipoprotein increases chance of heart disease goes down so that is given here and uh, so that is given both paragraph 4 and 5 so paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 and 4 so in paragraph 1 so millet millet as a food has high level of hdl and low level of ldl so in millet we have high level of uh, high density lipoprotein and low level of uh, lipoprotein low density lipoprotein so ultimately heart disorders will be less when you consume lot of millets that is given here and also in paragraph 2 so millets is also able to solve millet is able to reduce colon and breast cancers this being uh, researched in animals which is being proven and the reason for the thing is uh, so they have this uh, phenolic components which helps to reduce the cancer cells and uh, that is flavonoids flavonoids and tantins etc okay. so in paragraph 3 so brain disorders and especially so excessive fat consumption excessive fat consumption excessive fat consumptions in human diet human diet can results in uh, uh, brain disorders this being proven one in brain disorders brain disorders and uh, and there comes the role of uh, uh, millets millets can reduce that uh, and uh, so especially they can see that uh, oxidative stress which you already saw in the previous point can results in uh, dementia so which can also be reduced by consumption of millets so fat consumption is one of the major reason for brain disorders and uh, fats uh, in millets are very less so that is given here and uh, so millets have low carbohydrate carbohydrate low carbohydrate and fiber ratio fiber ratio and high antioxidants high antioxidants and uh, this helps to reduce these two helps to reduce lifestyle diseases lifestyle diseases okay. and millets for pregnant and lact lactating mother so paragraph 1 paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 so in paragraph 1 it speaks about pregnancy so pregnancy it's a physiological condition physiological condition there is a greater demand for nutrients because of pregnancy so greater demand for nutrients so greater demand for nutrients and uh, that results in growth of increased growth of fortis fetus growth is entirely based on increased demand of nutrients and where millets will play a major role in it that is given here and uh, a study clearly says that prenatal that is before childbirth and postnatal postnatal uh, nutritional status can be matched by millets so both this time there is a great demand for uh, nutrition and millets can able to uh, provide all these things during the time and uh, 
uh, it's also given the importance of millets millets importance which already we saw apart from this uh, related to uh, pregnancy and all so it's also have minimal or no use of minimal or no use of chemical fertilizers chemical fertilizers and uh, and they have given the examples of millets which we already saw in the previous article examples of millets that we called as major minor and pseudo millets pseudo millets which we already saw so this is all given in paragraph uh, 2 and 3 so in paragraph 4 the so benefits of millets one is for human consumption human consumption human consumption so millets once people cultivate human consumption and also straw for animals so in agricultural activity it's beneficial for humans and also for animals especially for cattle animals means cattle and uh, so this can be grown in all different areas that is agroclimatic zones most suitable for varied agroclimatic zones and paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 so in paragraph 1 so as millet is antioxidant antioxidant anti carcinogenic anti carcinogenic anti inflammatory anti inflammatory antiviral so this helps to solve a lot of problems and uh, that is human health issues can be solved based on this and which also helps during pregnancy so so pregnant women also have all these issues which can be solved and also millet also have this probiotic food millet is a probiotic food which is good for guts good for gut and results results in gram negative gram negative bacteria as millets able to produce this gram gram negative bacteria which results in good for guts okay that is given in paragraph 1 and 2 that as paragraph 3 speaks about millet milk malt millet milk malt so which is based on millet jaggery and milk powder milk powder so which is very good for uh, pregnant women and also lactating mother so pregnant women and lactating mother this is very good and even ragi cutlets are being made Ragi cutlets. Which is rich in protein, iron, calcium, which is very needed for a pregnant mother a pregnant mother and also for lactating mother. So and they also identify that uh, bajra a millet is most essential for uh, a pregnant pregnant mother because uh, it helps to increase hemoglobin levels help to increase the hemoglobin levels and also helps in providing all the essential uh, nutrients and also millets helps to maintain bmi body mass index for pregnant women and lactating mother.
for pregnant and lactating pregnant women and lactating mother and also they identify another millet called kodo millet which is rich in nutrition easy to digest easy to digest which is also helping pregnant women pregnant women 